electric vehicles are still not yet a common sight in Malaysia. But many people in Malaysia are working to change that. One of them is Yunaisi, the president of Ziva, Zero Emissions Vehicle Association. In this video, I'll speak with Yunaisi about Malaysia's EV adoption. But first, you notice an EV behind us. Tell us a little bit more about this car. <laughs> okay, hi everyone, uh, Junaisi here. I've been using the Hyundai Ioniq 5 uh, over the past six months and um, it has been a very good experience uh, for me. Uh, the smoothness, the torque, the comfort, uh, it's, just, it's just way beyond my previous car. And uh, I hope to be able to enjoy it uh, more you know, in, the, in the coming years. Um, this has been my main day-to-day uh, -day kind of driving. Um, and uh, um, apart from very clean, very smooth uh, driving, I'm also uh, enjoying the the savings that I get from using an electric vehicle. Yeah. Underrated. People talk about sustainability a lot. Actually, the number one driving factor is savings and also a better performing car. How did all of this begin? Your journey with EVs and your journey with Ziva? Okay. I've always been interested in, in cars, basically. You know, um, I, I, I'm a car enthusiast. My previous car is a Volvo and um, um, when when uh, this wave of EV came to Malaysia, I just said, "Oh, I'm, I'm kind of curious how 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 um, uh, different it is or, or to to, drive, to use an EV." Then I decided, in order for me to really experience it, is to actually own it and use it, lah. You know, so I might as well um, jump on the, on the bandwagon, and I decided to to use uh, and, and change my car to to, to this Hyundai Ioniq Five. Now, Ziva is an association whose members are actually organizations or companies that has like-mindedness in this EV space, you know, and, and um, who likes environment, who likes clean environment, who likes uh, basically uh, EV feeling of driving this car. And then it's very, um, it's a close, co close-knit community with the same uh, interest. Yeah. So Ziba actually, uh, what we aspire it to be is to become the voice of EV here in Malaysia. And, and we are quite proud to, to, to say that, you know, um, um, we've been liaising with uh, a lot of uh, stakeholders and most of that, and uh, most of these stakeholders are government agencies. And um, they have been taking in our views, they have been taking in our, our, our wants. And in fact, some of these uh, views and, and wants have been put into policies here in, uh, uh, that the government made. So we're quite, quite Quite proud of that, like, you know, as an achievement. Yeah. What will you say is the biggest policy achievement so far? So far is the removal of taxes for, for EVs that are imported directly uh, into the country. So right now there is no road tax, zero road tax, zero import duty, zero um, um, sales tax, you know, and also excise duty for EVs that are brought in into Malaysia. See? Wow. Yeah. So we hope more and more um, EV friendly policies will be introduced by the government in the future, and Ziva will continuous will be continuously engaging with the with the with the stakeholders um, uh, to, to to bring more value to, 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 to Malaysians who want to who want to move to, to, to EVs. It has made an impact. Over coffee earlier, Junaid was sharing. End of last year, there were barely 500 EVs in the country. Right now, year to date, there are more than 2,000 EVs. What are the most common reasons for buying an EV here in Malaysia? Mostly, um, people buy EVs because they are they want to be environmentally uh, uh, responsible. That's number one, like, I, 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 the way I look at it. EVs are, are generally more expensive than ICE vehicles here in Malaysia still. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have models or, or brands that are, uh, that are meant for, for the masses yet. But that is why the early adopters are basically those who who, who can afford uh, such a vehicle. But and because of that, that's why I'm saying um, uh, the, the the first uh, uh, reason or the main reason at this time is the, the the mindset of wanting to have a cleaner and greener environment here in Malaysia. And uh, I think once we have more afford more affordable cars, that will change. That will change, and the reason would probably then would probably be um, because the price of EVs and the price of uh, cars, uh, normal cars, will be at par already. And by then, the the obvious right reason to 
to use a car is actually an electric vehicle. That's what I, I that's how I like I look at it. Now. That is so true. There are more EV options now. Earlier this week, BYD had their Atto 3 roadshow, and right now they probably sold about about a hundred plus more than a few hundred bookings. Later this week, Volvo has their own new EV oh, launch yeah, as well. Oh yeah, C40. Yeah. Ah, this Friday. So the models are increasing. The options are getting better. Correct. BYD Atto 3, 150,000 ringgit onwards. Basically comparable with the Honda CRV yes. pricing. Yes. You've mentioned in earlier videos, demand exceeds supply in Malaysia. And that's been one of the challenges in growing the adoption. Yes. Can you share with the audience, how come supply is a bigger challenge here? The reason mostly is due to the regulation that we have here in Malaysia. The government imposes quite a bit of uh, condition for importers to bring in new cars, new brands. Uh, there is a process that the government uh, imposes on importers uh, to ensure that the cars, the cars that they bring in are roadworthy as far as Malaysia is concerned. Once the cars pass that process, it is all, you know, go uh, green, green light for them. So not an issue actually. It's just that that first level of uh, 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 approval process that any car importers need to go through. Hopefully, it's a one-off pain and as more models get introduced with a much larger foundation, yes. much larger baseline to work with here. Yes, The right. government has incentives and I know Ziva is also working on trying to extend the tax freeze uh, for one more year yeah. from end of 2023 to end of 2024. Yeah, correct. So there is good effort here by the team what else can public and private sector do to encourage more EV adoption? Okay, um, basically we see four barriers of uh, uh, adoption. Now. Number one is the price of EVs. So yeah, with the tax, uh, uh, ta ta the, the zero tax and tax free uh, period, uh, it has gone down. And uh, I think uh, more and more uh, uh, players are bringing in their cars here, which is good. Uh, that, but, but that's the first barrier that we can see. So, and uh, the way to do that is to make sure that uh, the cars remain at the affordable kind of uh, level for most Malaysians. That's number one. Number two is the charging infrastructure or the lack of it. Yeah. So that's probably the second barrier. Lah. I mean, um, the numbers have grown uh, as far as the, the, the charges here in Malaysia is concerned. Uh, but uh, we, we hope there will be more going to be installed uh, from now onwards especially on major trunk roads. Right now the focus on highways, but major trunk roads also, I, I think, needs to be installed with chargers as well. The third barrier is actually on EV-friendly policies, which I mentioned a bit earlier just now. We have already some good policies from the government, but we need more actually. We need more. For example, one example is for condominiums. So we need the government to, to play its role in making sure that all new con con condominiums that are being built in Malaysia should come with EV charging facilities for the for the use for the for the buyers, and the fourth is the ecosystem of EV support lah. You know, um, as you know, um, whenever you use a car, you need somebody to be able to service the car to repair some of the components, so so that you don't have to go to the dealership so much. But this is where the, there is a gap in the capability of our mechanics and our technicians. We need to retrain and also upskill them so that they can they can um, also service EVs, you know. So um, so these are the four elements, four barriers that we see that can can uh, if we uh, if we um, overcome that, it will increase the num the adoption of EVs here in Malaysia. Very clear. <laughs> One price, pricing of affordability is getting better. It's no longer just a rich person's toy in the past. EVs are getting more mainstream especially with BOID here, 150k price point. Second would be the charging availability. Yes, we need a good public mix. charging availability. Public charging, good mix of fast DC and also slow AC charges. There's a target of at least about 10,000 charge points yes. in Malaysia yes. by 2025. Yes. The third would be the policies. policies. So let's like say for condos, it's a pain point for many of us. You need to get like a super majority to approve. Even when it doesn't charge, cost your neighbors anything, people can still reject it. Yep. So policies matter, like UK, all new buildings must have an EV charging capability, okay. all new buildings. An extreme would be, let's say, a place like Singapore where they say by 2030, you really cannot buy any ice car already. But that's an extreme version of policy. And then the last one is the ecosystem. So 
And EEDs, for instance, uh, they need to be told the wheels off the road. So a little bit of training in industry and even finance, like insurance. Yeah. Today, EV insurance is still higher than ICE car insurance. The rationale for many insurance companies is if something major happens, the motor replacement cost would be higher than the ICE car. Fair point, but the percentage of major incidents for EVs is much lower than ICE cars so sure, far. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if you balance that out, actually insurance cost of EVs should actually be lower than ICE cars over time. Right. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little bit of bias here, huh? but big fans of EVs. For many Malaysians, they believe we've got good petrol subsidies in the country. So why rush? Why not just wait a few more years, let everything be more established, then I'll get an EV. <laughs> What's your take? Okay, um, yes, that's true. I can totally agree with you on that. However, you know, you want to, ben you want to feel the benefit of, of using an EV as, as soon as you can. La. So if you can afford it, you will have the means to, to, to get one. But as well, you know, and, and things are getting better a, a, anyway, in terms of charges, in terms of the, the availability, availability of charges, in terms of the, the, the tax breaks and everything, things are getting better and better. So, so I, I think if, if you can, you, if you have a, uh, uh, you can afford it and you, 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 have, you have the means to, to, to use an EV, why wait? Why wait? Why wait? Because I tell you, once you drive an EV, you wouldn't want to go to drive a, own, uh, an ICE vehicle anymore. <laughs> so that's also the other thing, right? Even if you don't want to get an EV, you know like how when you buy a TV now, you don't think in your mind, I want to get an OLED TV, I want to get a 4K TV. You just think in your mind, I want to get a good TV. Correct. Right, I can see. But the good TV just happens to be all that in 4K. Yeah. So in the future, we're going to get a good car, comfortable, great technology. It just happens to be an EV. Why? Because car companies around the world, most of the R&D is now on EVs. Yeah. All the new platforms are now on EVs. Yeah. You see companies like Mercedes, I think they say by 2030, they're no longer making new ICE platforms already. Yeah. So new cars, better cars, just happen to be EVs, even if you don't want an EV. Yes, exactly. That's true. That's true. That's true. You got it right. You got it right. Now, Malaysia's EV adoption is still low. It's, we calculated, around 0.3%. With more affordable EVs, with all the progress we have in the industry, long way to go, but we've progressed. How do you see EV adoption playing out in 2023? Oh, okay. Uh, we think that the numbers are going to go on the ramp up um, uh, uh, um, almost exponentially from now onwards. We can see the, 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 the figure moving from 500 over by the end of December up to more than 2,000 now. And we think with BYD, cars like BYD, the Aura, Good Cat, what, those are in the 150,000 price range. It's going to go up even further from now onwards, faster uh, as well. That's how we look at it, not only up to 2023, but even beyond that. In fact, um, we are looking forward to, to, to have about 30,000 of these EV cars running on our roads by 2025. And that number should go up to 500,000 by 2030. We are looking forward to that kind of uh, volume up to 2030 at this point. Yeah. For some Malaysians watching this, it sounds so hard to believe. Half a million EVs in Malaysia. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then this is really like the phone revolution playing out in front of us from Nokia to iPhone. In the span of five years, we've seen the switch to smartphones happen dramatically. Right, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think um, it's happening all over the all over the world. In fact, you know the, this 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 wave of EV adoption is happening all over the world. In Norway, for example, 90% of vehicles sold in Norway today, this year, are EVs. Can you imagine that? 90%! And every 10 cars that, that pass you by, 7 or 8 are EVs. Eh? Uh. So, I think um, that's in a way, of course, maybe uh, in a European country, but it's everywhere. In China, in the US, here in this region, look at Thailand, look at Singapore. So. <laughs> It's coming, you know, it's just that um, if, like I said, if you have the means, go for it now. I mean, uh, not only you will enjoy the driving, you will do the environment some good. <laughs> yeah, that's True. what I think. I'm so happy to be here with you in these early days in the wild, wild east. 
as we adopt EVs in the next few years. Yes. yes. I'll put a link down to Ziva's website where you can learn more about what they are doing. And if you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on EVs. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. In Malaysia, we call it Jom EV. Jom EV. <laughs>